It is the start of a brand new week here at Houston Life. Thanks so much for joining us on this Monday, February 11th. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. It is Monday. Cheers to a brand new week, my friends. I mean, it's not technically breakfast anymore. It's lunch, folks. We it's can always lunch. You have a little glass of wine. Drink our lunch. <laughs> drink our lunch. Okay, but today we have a reason why we are toasting. Courtney, after you're done with your sip, do you want to tell our lovely viewers why we're drinking? We are saying congratulations and welcome. Welcome to Perry's Steakhouse, officially opening their River Oaks location today. And uh, we went to the media preview. This is right there on West Gray. Yeah, it's their first. absolute beautiful location. First location inside the loop, which is a very big deal. Uh, and check out how beautiful it is inside. It was so fun last week, Courtney, when you and I stopped by for their little reception before opening day. But today is the official opening for the general public. So you can go in there. There's Chris, the owner, Chris Perry. Chris Perry. And those stairs, I didn't realize this when we got there, but there's a that main floor is basically the bar area. Yeah. And then upstairs is the dining room. And it's so fantastic. You guys remember Sherlock's back in the day, uh, West Gray. They, you know, that whole location was completely renovated, gutted to the stones. And uh, it looks so beautiful. Yeah, that upstairs dining room is really something. All also, really something, I had never seen a wine bottle quite as big as the one they've brought us today. Look, it looks pretty normal size, right? Oh, it's not a normal size. It's not. <laughs> this is the equivalent of, I thought it was four, I guess it's eight. It's eight, eight bottles. Eight bottles of wine. And just so you know, this is Perry's Reserve Cabernet. You can only get it at Perry's. It's so fantastic. It's a it's a beautiful glass of wine. I don't know what you're going to drink <laughs> you, today, Derek. You get a whole <laughs> Wait, hold on. Can you try to pick that up, Courtney? Put your wine glass down. Oh, well, I want to see. How do you even? <laughs> well, I can do this. That's yeah, right. you know, I'm tough. Uh, that, that CrossFit training comes yeah, in very but handy. But isn't that amazing? Look at that. How do you even? It's like a family photo. It's like the same <laughs> size as you. <laughs> How do you even pour a bottle of wine like that? Carefully. <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> Put some straws in there. You don't have to worry about pouring it. <laughs> All right. You know? Well, cheers, cheers to Paris. Congrats cheers to on your first location yeah. inside the loop. It's about time, by I the way. I know. So excited. <laughs> Just kidding. Also, before we get into our little funny stuff that we're going to talk about over the weekend, still to come on today's show, DIY ideas to help you throw a Galentine's Day party on a budget. We're talking from cocktails to, hello, sheet masks and more we've got something for everyone this segment is going to blow your mind i love it and guys you can watch this segment yes. too it's okay they're guys, great ideas and masks. you can make this stuff and have a fun evening at home also details on the local event that's breaking down barriers and using art to celebrate those with disabilities and also where you can score high-end labels for low prices and it's all for a good cause i am actually wearing the, the pants that I'm wearing today, so just keep an eye on it, they're Chanel, wide Ooh. leg, um, like high-waisted, beautiful pants. This beautiful Tiffany's um, bamboo crystal bowl. Oh, I know this Tiffany pattern. Yeah, the bamboo. And then um, these Kendra Scott earrings, which are in store currently. They're so beautiful. These here. And then, remember I said Chanel with a side of Chanel? This sweater, y'all, I purchased this stuff for like a little under a hundred dollars. Wait, everything together? Yes, everything together. Everything together. Hold on, hold on. Current Kendra Scott earrings? Yes. How did, how did they have those? Uh, somebody donated them, but we're gonna tell you where. We're gonna tell you the best days to go shop there and how to like kind of do some thrift shopping, um, how you do that. But it's right here. It's been here for a really long time. I'm gonna take you inside the cottage shop, y'all. It's mind blowing. These pants are like life changing. Chanel pants. Chanel wide leg black pants. I don't own anything, Chanel. I do now. That's amazing. Yeah. They have guy stuff too there. They do have store, guy right? stuff, and of course they have home decor, they have rodeo stuff. I mean, like, unbelievable. The labels that we found there, you guys, I mean, mind blowing. Okay, that's a good tip. You know me, I love a good thrift store. You do, well, see, LA has tons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta know where to go, that's the key, because yeah. there's a lot of stuff. You gotta and you gotta keep going. It's gotta be on your rotation. You can't just go there and expect to hit it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You've gotta go and pop in every now and then, because it could be a couple times before you actually find those labels. But I'll also tell you what day is the day that they put out the new merch. All the new stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'd see that little sparkle in your <laughs> eye. Well, you know, I wonder if you were buying some of the stuff that we got rid of this weekend. Maybe. <laughs> because 
ever since we started, well, first of all, we read the Marie Kondo book. Yes. And now we're watching the Netflix special. Look at little Brandon there. When I tell you we loaded our car to the brim, it looked like we were moving. This is one, one of, of the five carts they had to load up at the thrift store to roll inside. We were so packed in there that I, Brandon had stuff on his lap, and I was like, dude, I can't see the side mirror. Can you kind of like, you're like fine, you're fine. squish down? I think it's awesome, though, that yes. you did that. that. Isn't that so great? Oh, it feels so good to just go through things you don't need, you don't want, you don't wear. And, you know, a lot of people are sentimentally attached to stuff. Totally. I am. Brandon's not one of those people. No. <laughs> so it turns out. Get rid out, of it. And he, he'll set a goal and he'll say, you know what, I'm going to get rid of 25 things. He'll go upstairs and 30 seconds later, Come he's down. down with all this stuff. I don't I wear it, it, don't need it, don't want it. Yet I would go through it painstakingly like, oh, that was the thing that I wore the time I held my first niece for the first time, you know. Yeah, you so have... I need to get rid of the sentimental stuff. But it feels good to purge. It does feel good to purge, because then you can go and buy new, new stuff. New stuff. You make room for the new. Okay, so you know that Brandon works for the Manil Collection, which is not just a museum. It's 30 acres right in the middle of Houston. And one of his favorite artists is uh, Calder. He does, like, a, a lot of those big, like, metal sculptures right. and mobiles. So we got not a Calder, because they're, like, $20 <laughs> million. Say, dollars. breaking news. <laughs> but we got this little mobile. Uh, it was designed by this Danish artist named... Ollie Hempstead, I believe, or I, I don't know what his last name is, but Brandon does. He's, he's the artist beautiful. in the family. It's beautiful. That looks like a museum in and of itself. Yeah, but this was the challenge, though, because this is hanging. You've, you've been to my house. Yeah, you know, we have high like ceilings. Of, high ceilings. So, but this is up on the fourth floor where we fastened it, and it had to hang down to the third. So essentially, I was imagining falling to my death, because if you fall, <sighs> you have yeah. four floors to fall. But we did a little art installation. I'm so proud of you. Thanks it looks so great. Much. It's a perfect spot for it. Can you tell we're minimalist? I love it though. Nothing else is nothing else is in that hallway. It's so awesome though. Yeah, I love so it. and you were busy while we were risking our lives hanging yeah. things from the ceiling. You were out at the baseball field. I was. I started Saturday though um, getting all glammed up to go to the baseball fields. We did the beauty event uh, at Neiman Oh, Marcus that's right. This I saw. Weekend. Um, and kicking off all things spring, which was really awesome. Um, this is Rona Samuels, and she is a uh, national makeup artist with Georgia Armani. I mean, she's only done people like me and Michelle Obama and Kerry Washington. So, I mean, oh, like, wow. she's pretty amazing. I know two of those people. <laughs> and she's from here. She is so fantastic. You'll meet her soon coming up on Houston Life, but so great. And then uh, the rest of the brands, of course, store manager. And uh, it was just so awesome. And it was so cold that day to be in that beautiful yellow floral Parker dress. Your was, dress is super cute. Was super fun. Look great. Looking forward to spring. It was a really great event. And then I all glammed up, got there just in time to see Connor throw some heat on the mound. Uh, so that we were freezing. I didn't actually start to feel on my fingertips until like late Saturday night. Um, and this was late last night for the uh, Cupid's Challenge. Thunder pulls out another win and gets their jewelry yet again. So super proud of these boys. They are playing so amazingly well. That's a big deal. Oh, they, and Whimsy World. This. Oh, Whimsy World, which we saw last year on Houston Life. When yeah, you these that's Orlando, my lovely husband, and uh, he braved that with us, uh, with me over the weekend. So it was fun. And look at you and your headpiece too. Did a little. I went a little outside of the box. Thanks for noticing. I was so nervous to wear it. It's okay not, to be a little avant-garde on the weekends. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I pulled it off. Nicely done. I mean, I wore it. I don't know if I pulled it off, but I wore it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe I'm too old. You for pulled that it kind off of stuff. when you got home. I, I think did. You pulled it off nicely. Yeah. Well, you, you are a fashion icon here in Houston, whether you like it or not. Oh. Seriously, how many how many times a day do you get messages on your phone asking where you bought something? I get I get a few. That's not you're embarrassing me. That's well, nice. you're so she's so modest, right? But that's just one of the reasons why we love her. I love you. Oh my gosh, you know what? I think of you so much when we're not together. True. It happens. We were. Oh my gosh, what? and you know what? Usually when we when I'm thinking of you, it's because people annoy me, and I think. <laughs> I think, what would Courtney do? So <laughs> yesterday, we're at Costco, right? Sunday, maybe not a great time to go to Costco. Yeah. It wasn't as busy Attack as we patience. thought it would be. Yeah. When I tell you the spatial awareness, and sorry, folks, if some of you out there are like this, but when I tell you, you know, the samples are out at Costco. Full force. And so let's say the samples are over here, and people have their, their grocery carts, like, way over here obliviously blocking the way. I mean, In the middle of the walkway and the aisle and everything else? There was a traffic jam that was so bad, I felt like I was, uh, I don't know, at the 610 interchange right, or the, the 288. Bowl. Yes. And people have their carts around. People are trying to squeeze by while this woman is just blissfully 
Shoveling it in. Shoveling samples in her mouth. Ooh, that sausage, that chicken sausage, that's delicious. And I thought, what would Courtney do? I'd move her cart. I'd say, ma'am, are we eating or are we shopping? <laughs> what are we doing? Is this a restaurant? Do you have a reservation? <laughs> move it along. See, that's why I need you. <laughs> I should, next time I am calling you, I'm putting you on speaker. <laughs> and I'm just going to hold it up. Anyway, ne next time I should shoot video, because it was one of those moments I just thought, wow. Especially when you live in a big city like Houston, yeah. there's only so much space, right? So, like, be aware I that other people the boys, are on the planet, right? I always tell the boys. You know, you want to raise gentlemen. You, you want your kids to grow up with manners. And, you know, you have to teach them along the way, right? Yeah. Obviously. Um, and I always say to them, you are not the only people in this world. Yeah. Like, you got to look in front of you. You've got to look behind you. Like, if you're walking through a door, don't be that that guy or that person that like squeaks through the door and knows because you can hear me with my heels behind you don't don't like squeak open the door and like squeeze in because you're like oblivious you can't hold the door maybe someone hears your heels and they're afraid that they're being chased i don't by... know but like they should you know what i'm saying we should be aware of other things going on around my us. mom whenever someone holds the door for her my mom always says tell your mother she raised a gentleman. So many people say that to my boys my when they are holding. And my mom doors. always says, I'm going to start saying, tell your mother she didn't do a very, very good job. Very good job. <laughs> I love our conversation. That's what I should have said yesterday. I know. I love it. We need to take this show on the road. I keep saying it. Okay, coming up next on Houston Life, from cocktails to DIY sheet masks, a guide to throwing an epic Valentine's Day party. That's coming up. Cheers. So, of course, Valentine's Day isn't just for couples. It's the perfect excuse for a night of pampering, whether you are by yourself or with friends. And here with more on DIY Valentine's Spa Day is lifestyle blogger Meredith Staggers with Cake and Confetti. Great to see Hi, you. Great to see you all, too. Thanks for having me again. This is so visually stimulating. I mean, it just, I don't, it's so pretty. Beautiful. A lot of pink going on. I know. There is. There is. So, um, first, we're going to talk about this uh, DIY balloon garland. Um, there is a local business here uh, in Houston that uh, she makes these balloon, or she delivers these kits with these balloon garlands. And so, you get this tape, you get all the balloons that you need, and these instructions printed right here. So, she tells you exactly how you can create it um, yourself. So, that is there's awesome. little holes inside the tape and so if you um, so it's just, just like a ahead. plastic tape essentially uh -huh. and you yep. blow up the balloons and then just pull them right through yes so she um, can do whatever color combination that okay. you want for whatever parties and so, so it's a great um, great backdrop great thing to add to the table and so. you don't have to worry about sticking the balloons to the wall how expensive next. is that though under $30 under 30 oh. bucks yeah okay I love it yes and then so next is this fun little cocktail um, it is, we use this elderflower rose lemonade to go with like the spa water Ooh. rose infused um, theme. So it's just like champagne, champagne and, a, and a little elderflower and, rose uh -huh. flavoring? Yep, and so I previously froze um, some ice cubes, some dried roses um, in the ice oh cubes. Oh my gosh, that's so and beautiful. Then, so you just put dried flower in the ice cube uh -huh. and then freeze it as yeah. simple as that sounds. I use the silicone molds just because it's easier it, yeah it's easier to pop to them pop out them out yeah. what a cute idea oh my so, gosh yeah. that's beautiful and are the rose Cheers. petals edible they are where do you get those um those from are your from garden. world market oh okay <laughs> or your garden. Or garden. Your garden that works too I don't and then the these garden. are just little um <laughs> like foam hearts to use as coasters from the craft store super just cute a fun little like different touch and um i love that this little sign it says sips sip while you spa is from the target dollar spot so i just used a paint marker to do that oh courtney loves that section i do yes it it's gets good stuff every there. Time. i have i've got great <laughs> stuff there okay so next up y'all are going to make some soap okay uh, so this is a little diy soap bar that you could have for your girlfriends um something a little interactive to do while you sip your cocktail okay so, idea. so this is the soap okay so you're you're gonna add I brought sprinkles because I like sprinkles they're cute um, and then more dried rose petals that Wait, you can add to your up. soap back it up where do you buy this like um, so you can buy it at the craft store you can buy it on Amazon and it in um, raw form it just looks like these it looks like this it's a blocks. big um, so it's like a 
clear block of soap. Yes, absolutely. And then you so just it's melt just it? glycerin. Uh huh. Yeah, you can do like shea butter. You can do goat's mm. milk soap. Um, there's all different things that you can do. And then here's a little pigment if you wanted to like color your soap. Oh. Fun. Yep. And then you just pour them in the silicone molds, and I put them in the freezer. This is the finished product, um, but so you can cute. just let it. So essentially, let we're it just all. dumping it right into the mold. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't stick it in the freezer, eventually it'll set up at room temperature, but the, yes. the freezer kind of hastens that process. Yes, absolutely. Sorry. I think yours needed to be uh, heated up a little bit more. And then you can add in um, a little essential oils um, to make it smell That's great. great. And that's yes. a great teacher's gift. I know I yeah. say that all the time, but I love that for a teacher's gift. Absolutely. This is just a little silicone tray that you yeah, found. Yeah, yeah. So, so you like can use it to baking. Yeah. You can do any shapes that you would like. It's purpose. What a fun finished product. Right? I love yeah. that. Um, so next up is um, DIY sheet masks. So sheet masks, sheet masks are obviously very popular I love right them. now. Yeah, but they're typically like three dollars, like per mask. Yeah, right? it, it it's like a one-time use. So the, you can buy this on Amazon. There's a hundred for ten dollars. Amazon Prime. Okay, and these are the masks. These are the masks. Okay. So then you're gonna add something to it to then put on your face. Okay. So this is what it looks like. It's just a little pellet. Just okay. A little pellet. And, and then, we're pouring yeah, the water. so each of you pour half of that. So this is just like a facial toner, rose water, and then it oh, expands. Wow, wait a minute. So it's it's almost like one of those t-shirts <laughs> yes, that you get. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Absolutely. So then you can add a little bit more, but yours seems pretty pretty well saturated. Okay? Yeah, and then you to... just <gasps> pull it apart. Oh my word. What? Hold on. This is amazing. I'm, my mind is blown. <laughs> Doesn't it smell good? It does. Yeah, and then this is just from Trader Joe's. Did you put that in the water already? The, the uh, rose water um, toner? Yeah, so that's what was in the oh, little container. Oh, that's what that is. Uh -huh. Definitely <gasps> smells of rose water. It oh, yeah. so good. I love that toner. Put it on. I'm going to take my makeup <laughs> off, which is not going to be good. Isn't that awesome? Yes, you could wear this at the grocery store. <laughs> yes. You know, you Absolutely. can really tell someone yes. how you feel in that mask. They're never going to know it's yeah. you. Oh my gosh. Get I'd out like of my way, lady. Fund. I yes. just, <laughs> wow. Isn't that awesome? You yeah, know, it smells so good, yeah. too. So mm -hmm. this is something that you could sit around with your girlfriends or your guy friends, your friends, family, yeah. whatever, and just have a little one of your fancy drinks and enjoy a nice soothing mask. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry. Amazon again for these? Yeah. Okay. ten ninety nine dollars Amazon Prime for these. And then this is just a few dollars from Trader Joe's. So yeah. then you're able to use a mask a lot more often. Um, you can also infuse them with essential oils and with lotions yeah. and serums, Amazing. all sorts of things. And, and then, then you have a little favor bag. Yes. So um, this is all from the Target dollar spot as well. So it's just a little something that you could send your girlfriends home with. Um, a cute pair of socks, a nice little like exfoliating brush. Yeah. And then of course my personal favorite, the mask that you can um, put in the freezer. You have Meredith. a beautiful glow. These are such cute ideas. I feel Thank like you. I don't even need to celebrate Valentine's now because we just did it here. Yeah, all week on long. On the show, <laughs> all week long. Meredith, great to see you. Great to see you all. Thank and you. And as always, if you'd like to connect with our guest Meredith, just visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. And keeping track of the stock market can be confusing. Should you buy in now or sell out? We're gonna break down the numbers and what that means for your portfolio coming up next next in the Shakiba Report. When it comes to the stock market, you might be wondering whether we are up or down so far this year. And more importantly, what does that mean for our portfolios? Here with those answers and much more, welcome back, Private Wealth Advisor with Ameriprise Financial, Trevor Shakiba. Great to see you. Yeah, good to see y'all. Okay, this is your job over the next couple of minutes is to break down the entire market from top to bottom. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? From the beginning, uh, the market is definitely up. It's actually been one of the best months, January, historically ever. And this is a good, good time to pause just because we're about six weeks in. And then remember, at the end of last year, it was doom and gloom. Right. We went into a bear market, which is a 20% pullback or more on the Dow. And one of the things we talked about is should you get out? And, and so I just wanted to pause here and, and think about that. December, the market was down 9%. January, we had a complete turnaround. Just like that, we're up 8%. And so we're gonna talk more about that here in a second, but you don't wanna be reacting emotionally, and this is why. Well, yeah, that's the perfect lesson. When it's down, everyone talks about selling off and panicking. Obviously, it's up now. So what can we really learn from this? 
Well, you know, one of my key points here is market timing, trying to jump in and out is for the birds. Don't try to do it because we just figured that out. Um, look, unless you have a crystal ball, which no one does, I don't, no one else does, you're not going to be able to figure out when to get in, when to get out. It's just not the right answer long term to achieve your financial goals and build wealth. And isn't it sort of when you when you are playing the market, for lack of a better phrase, I mean, you're in it for the long haul. You're not in it for the short, oh, it's down, get out. Yeah, exactly. So the, the thing I always like to point out is, is are you investing long term to achieve those goals or are you gambling? Because if you're getting in and out, that is closer to actually going to Vegas. Here's the problem. If you get out and you want to let the uncertainty go away, I heard a lot about that. The problem is, is if you get out, even if you do at the right time, how do you know when to get back in? Because there's no magic bell that's going to go off that, that tells you now's the time to get back in. So if you got out in December, now you're sitting in cash, what do you do? And so that's why I'm always pointing out, be focused on your financial plan and think long term. Well, okay, so Trevor, let's talk exactly about what you just mentioned. Let's say some people did get out in December. Now they have this cash. What do they do now? Well, what I would say is, is invest, right? The, the old adage is time in the market is more important than timing the market. And what that means is, is that you've got to be invested to build wealth. Remember, approximately a third of your total return is going to come from dividends. And if you're not invested, you certainly aren't going to have dividends. So um, the, the one other point here is, is if it's a large sum of money, are you just retired or there's a pension that you're rolling over? Maybe you don't plop it all right into the market, but you do something called dollar cost averaging, which spreads your risk out, it means you put a certain amount in per month because we don't know what the market's going to do in the near term. And the bottom line is when you are in the market, this is investments, you're looking at basically the future and the future is a little bit off ways than tomorrow, yeah. right? So you got to stay focused on sort of that end result, right? Right, right. So Look, day to day, month to month, anything can happen. It's almost irrelevant. So my two points here is focus on what's most important. The day to day ups and downs of the market is not it. What are your financial goals or, or do you have financial goals? And then do you have a plan? That is what is critical to being able to achieve those goals and ultimately build wealth. Okay, and having a plan, you've mentioned this before, Trevor, but I feel like it bears repeating. Having a plan doesn't just mean, oh, I want to have money when I retire. Right. You need to look at your expenses and figure out a dollar amount of how much you're actually going to need every single month when you retire, right? Yeah, absolutely. Always start with your end goal. So if you live on a certain amount now, it's easy to project that out and then back into it. And then you can get really specific and figure out what exactly do you need to do to be able to achieve those goals for retirement or education planning or even debt elimination and things of that nature. And you would never do your own heart surgery, so why not hire yes. someone to deal with your finances? If you would like more info on financial planning or a complimentary consultation with Trevor and the Shakiba Group, you can call 281-724-9917 or you can visit them online at theshakibagroup.com. Trevor, thanks as always for the advice. Thank you. And coming up next, support a good cause and score designer labels for less. We're taking you inside the cottage shop when we come back. Okay, attention shoppers, if you love designer items, but maybe not the designer price tag, we have a spot for you. Listen up, we showed you earlier the things that I got, Chanel with a side of Chanel, these pants I'm wearing today. I love a good fashion deal, um, but don't forget that uh, I also scored those Kendra Scott earrings. Everything I bought at the cottage shop was just under $100, and today I'm taking you there. I found vintage pieces like this padded quilt neon jumper, um, Louis Vuitton, hello, Gucci stilettos, Prada. I mean, I find all sorts of things here. Tina Zulu is a professional at bargain shopping. She has scored sought after designer labels at a fraction of the cost. Half of my closet is from the cottage. The cottage shop is in the heart of the Montrose and it's not your typical high dollar boutique. This is a resale shop that's been here since 1971, offering high fashion clothing and home goods at incredible prices. Talk to me about this. This is okay. stuff that you kind of walked around and found that's currently in the store? Yes, this is a Judith Lieber bag, vintage, $70. So cute. Missoni dress, 
What? $60. I pulled some fun little resorty beach cover-ups and whatnot. Cute. So fun. Cute. Love the linen look with the beaded necklaces, layering. So cute. This is all regular price stuff. So this would be like $350 on Mondays or seven regular price. $350 for the dress on Mondays. $6 necklaces. Hello. Can't beat it. <laughs> Hello. Christian Dior, you just have to be able to have some time. This is, a, you know, you, you can't have like five minutes and think you're gonna roll through this right. shop. Right. Don't be afraid to mix high-low. This is a gap dress. I mean, it looks don't be a label snob. What's <laughs> happening with these sunglasses? I have your name on it, Tom Ford. What? $25. Tom Ford sunglasses. <laughs> and there's tons of rodeo fashions on display as well. $60 Manolos. Size seven, come get them, someone. This one-of-a-kind resale shop is consistently getting in new merchandise. People who clean out their closets make donations here, and this is owned and operated by the Women's Home. We raise about $650,000 a year just through the cottage shop alone, and it goes directly back to help all the services that we provide. The clients who benefit are women staying at the Women's Home. They are homeless and have some sort of an addiction. It could be someone who has unfortunately lived on the streets their whole life, or it could also be someone that had had a college degree, you know, was working and somehow fell in hard times and ends up with an addiction and on the streets and then they come through our program. And some clients even work at the cottage shop. We serve as a social enterprise for them and we also provide revenue and we also serve as a vocational training site for all the clients that come through our program. So you can shop for a good cause. And while you're picking up some new to you designer duds, check your closet for things you're ready to part with to make a donation to the cottage shop. All kinds of labels. So it could be labels from Neiman and Marcus. It could be Black uh, White House Black Market. It could be Talbots, Ann Taylor, Prada, Escada, uh, Gucci, Armani. It's always fun. You never know what you're going to find. <laughs> surprised. I couldn't believe the deals I found. By the way, those Tom Ford sunglasses went to Sir, my photographer, for 25 bucks. So today, Monday, 50% off all regular clothing, as you see there. But then they go by day by day of their different deals that they have. Wednesday is when they bring out the new merch, when they restock. I cannot wait to go. I know. For more information, visit HoustonLife.tv. Thanks so much to the Cottage Shop for letting us come in, too. Such a cool place. And thank you, Courtney, for the shopping tips. Yeah, and donate your stuff there, too, because we need stuff to buy. All right, folks, still ahead on Houston Life, journey into Greek mythology with the Houston Ballet's newest production, Sylvia. will take you behind the scenes as one of the main characters prepares for ultimate battle between duty and desire. It was one of those mornings where uh, we all had our umbrellas out. Yes. Meteorologist Justin Stapleton is standing by with a forecast. Justin, will we need him? Yes. In fact, we've actually got more showers are starting to stream in now. We knew this would be the case today. Everybody's warm. We're all in the mid-70s, and it's going to uh, continue to be a bit of a showery afternoon. Nothing crazy, but notice that they are now streaming in. You can see from Lake Jackson now approaching in towards the south loop there and the Gulf Freeway. So just watch out for that this afternoon. I'm not expecting anything too crazy, but I'm going to keep the rain chances anywhere from around 40 to 50 percent. And we'll keep those uh, temperatures really mild through much of the evening as well. So let's run the numbers here as we take the future cast. So as we get in through the afternoon some scattered showers as you're picking the kids up or you're headed home or headed out for the evening no problems here comes the front overnight not much to it by the time that passes south uh, that's about it and then as we get in tomorrow morning we start off in the 50s and then you see a little cool down to the low 50s but then get back up into the low 60s but look at that sands cloud cover that would be nice to get a little sunshine out there as well for those Tom Ford sunglasses, Court. Yeah. As well, that's right. We've got uh, 64 for tomorrow, or for tomorrow, that is, 68 as we get to Wednesday. Here's the best news, guys. For Valentine's Day, we've taken the rain chances out completely, so it looks like you should be A-OK -okay for patio or just about anything else you want to do with y'all sweet day Thursday night. You know what that is? That's a good shoe forecast. That Thanks, is Justin. a good shoe forecast. <laughs> Thanks, the, Justin. The shoe cast. Welcome. The shoe cast, absolutely. Well, it's a ballet that's coming to life for the very first time right here in Houston. Sylvia combines the drama of Greek mythology with the world-renowned talent of the Houston Ballet. One and only, right? Ahead of its world premiere, one of the leads of the show explained it how they prepare behind the scenes.
Later this month, a brand new ballet is having its world premiere right here in Houston. It's called Sylvia, and one of the leads of the show, the lovely Jessica Collado. Jessica, Hi. thanks for hanging out with us. My pleasure. Okay, so the show is about to open. You guys are in very intense rehearsals right now, but what's even more intense is that you're playing the role of Artemis. Artemis. Mm -hmm. And she is an Olympian, a very strong woman. So just describe how you would prepare for this role versus others. Yeah, I, I did a little bit of research. She is yeah, an Olympian, as you said. She's the hunt or the goddess of, of the hunt of the wilderness, of wild animals, all these kind of big dynamic things. She has this army of nymphs, which are these women warriors that kind of are always with her. She's the daughter of Zeus, and she has this twin brother, Apollo, and they kind of have this this budding kind of rivalry relationship between the two of them that creates some drama in the show. In rehearsals, it's so incredible to watch you all as a group so synchronized and part of what sets your role <laughs> apart is what you have in your hand. Yes. You use a bow. I do. I, I fight most often with a bow and arrow. I do some sword fighting at the very end, which is also fun. But yeah, this is kind of our weapon of the, of the nymph army. So we are often dancing with this and we have to kind of learn how to, you know, easily put it on and off and wear it like it's a purse, you know, just your everyday accessory. <laughs> and easily put it on and off. I mean, gracefully, you, you handle the bows like it's no big deal at all. Like they're an extension of your body. But right. I have to imagine that presents some sort of production challenges, right? A little bit. I think choreographically Stanton had to, you know, find a way to work with them and make sure that they weren't inhibiting our dancing, but, you know, an add-on. But it is a little tricky. Even firing them sometimes. We've gotten calluses on our forearms. <laughs> they're they're fun, but they're they're a little tricky. And you use arrows with them too? Not arrows. That's kind of <sighs> okay, an illusion. Worried. The arrow part is an illusion, but um but we do draw them and, and shoot. For you, I'm sure it's got to be a pretty major honor to be part of a world premiere mm -hmm. of a production of this magnitude, but also to be playing such a strong role in the production. Is there added pressure because of that? Uh, a little bit. I, I personally love being a part of a creation. I think it's, it gives you so much more creativity to kind of make the role your own, and you can find your own character and what feels natural for you. I, I love and enjoy that part of it. Uh, so yeah, there is a little bit of pressure knowing that this will be a ballet that will be performed by other companies and you're making it. And also the visuals in the show. It's not just the physicality of all of you on stage, the makeup and the costumes. Mm -hmm. They're over the top, huh? They are. They. I think that it's going to be beautiful. The sets, I think there's some projection work that's going to be on stage. Um, we go into the theater next week, so we'll get a better idea of what all that's going to be like. But yeah, the costumes are beautiful. We have these, this armor that is danceable, but looks like it's, it's made of metal, which is pretty cool. Oh my goodness. Danceable. Danceable. Something tells me you guys are going to be <laughs> flawless on stage, as you always are. So as Jessica just said, soon they're going to be going from these rehearsal spaces into the theater. Sylvia opens in just a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon. Good luck to you, Jessica. Thank I can't wait you. to see you on stage. Thanks, Good to see you. You too. And you can catch the Houston Ballet's production of Sylvia February 21st through March 3rd if you'd like more info. Or to purchase tickets, just visit their website, HoustonBallet.org. Very cool. Thanks for the background information. So awesome. After the break, three creative tailscapes ideas for your Valentine's Day dinner plans when we come back. Welcome back. Whether you spend Valentine's Day with your kids, your husband, or your gals, a beautiful table setting is a lovely touch on such a sweet day. It is, and it's a perfect touch. That's why interior designer Rainy Richardson is here with great tablescape ideas to inspire you. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me again. I am a hopeless romantic, and Valentine's is my favorite holiday, so this was perfect. It well, is, and I it think it's, it, you do, you make it look great. It's not only for couples, it's great for families, or whether you're going to do this 
this for breakfast. I like to do that for breakfast for the kids. So sweet. Walk us through it. Well, the first tablescape that I have for you today is kind of the romantic one, the typical uh, your loved one, whoever it is in your family that, or, or in your life that's your significant other. This would be kind of a romantic setting. We did a take on um, a sushi uh, setting. And for our napkin, we just took a regular white napkin and put Aww. X's and O's on it. You made that? Yes, with a Sharpie marker. Oh, wow. About These three minutes and a Sharpie marker. So um, we just added that to this little design here. Cute idea. We ordered fortune cookies from Etsy. You can get your own fortunes made and put inside of there. So if you're planning to propose oh. or ask somebody to be your forever, um, you could put uh, your own fortune inside of the cookie. Is there well. still time to do that on Etsy? I don't know. Running up against a wall. I don't know. You better get on that today. Get yes. on it That's right happening. Now. Also, this is such a cute idea. And uh, it's a little takeout box mm -hmm. with a, a flower box. arrangement. So I got the takeout boxes on Amazon. I heard you guys talking about the, the wonderful uh, properties of Amazon. You can get anything on anything. there, right? You can. you can also get takeout boxes. And we just put some beautiful roses in there to, to be our centerpiece. Look and it's kind of personal. You know, I always love the pinks and the reds and, you know, the pastels for Valentine's Day. But this black, white, and red, very sophisticated, has kind of that adult feel to it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Very clean and mm -hmm. chic. That's Temporary. Exactly right. And then uh, for Galentine's, which I saw the spa day spot yes. on Galentine's, so this is a great tie into that. Um, if you're going to have your girlfriends over, again, like you said, for breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner, any of those, this tablescape would be perfect for that. And these are real flowers. We actually just took a corsage and we wrapped them around a standard white napkin again, and that added a special touch uh, to this place setting. Very oh. cute. Okay, and I mean, a corsage you can purchase from a local florist, or if you are uh, ambitious, you could make it yourself. You could make it yourself. But I also like the way you layered these plates here. You've got that sparkly pink charger and the various plates on top. That just adds such a sophisticated look to it. It does. The stacking and the layers just make it look more special, that's for sure. And can't forget these fun gummies and candies on the side. Serafina. Love I it. I mean, can't go wrong with that. We uh, picked up the stemware at Anthropology. Mm -hmm. Love the pink with the gold rimming. And then we just added some greenery here to make it look fresh and inviting. So cute. Okay, and you got to end with, of course, the family Valentine's Day. Yes. Whether you're going to be um, a whole family or you're a single mom, single dad, and you're like, you know what, Valentine's is for us too. Uh, you can get these doilies. You can get pipe cleaners and make your own little napkin ring. And um, this little plate, all of this is from the dollar store. Oh, yes. And you're so you can so scoot into the dollar store, get these things, put them out and make dinner special. You could still do your hot dogs and chicken fingers because right. we all know that's what the kids want, right? Mac and cheese. <laughs> but it'll look festive. And we just put some M&Ms in this glass and some popcorn in a container. And there you have it. It's perfect. Even like a fun little pizza night. Yeah. Yes. You should pizza. That. Who, I mean, the, the M&Ms in the champagne flute, what a fun little idea. Thank you. Perfect way to use that. Yep. And you so could do sparkling um, like cider apple cider yes, for the absolutely. kids. Make it as special as you want to. That's Correct. So cute. We always did Martinelli when Martinelli's. Martinelli's when I was. In fact, we still do with my nieces. I love Very it. Fun. Um, okay, and so if we were going to outsource some of this stuff, you say dollar store, hit the dollar bins like at Target and yes. Amazon. You got to do yes. that today, though, right? It, you would probably have to do that today. Certainly, Etsy, like you mentioned, you're probably up against the deadline already. Etsy usually takes a week or two, or two to uh, to receive things, but if they have them on standby, ready to quick ship, you might be able to overnight your fortune cookies still. And Rainy Sugar Fina. Uh, they have a location right in the Galleria, they right? They do. They okay. do. And tons of things for Valentine's. So if you don't want to do the gummy lips or the gumballs, you can certainly find something um, for, for your celebration. And rosé gummy bears are my absolute favorites. Just you saying. can have those. Oh, oh I, I didn't realize. <laughs> no, I didn't realize that's what was there. There I, you, you know go, me, Courtney. I can't see. Here you go. <laughs> to keep up with Rainy, you can visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. That was not my intention. <laughs> These are my favorite. Can I take them now? I really <laughs> like popcorn. <laughs> This is my life. Okay, still ahead on Houston Life, using art to change perceptions about disabilities. We're going to share all the info on this local event coming up next. Wake up and watch. KPRC Channel 2 News today. We're showing you how to love your age. Wait.
Whether you've already hit the big 5-0, you're getting close, or you just want to plan for the future. Is there a good way to go gray? Find out how you can make it work for you. Plus, the keys to living at peak health, meaningful relationships, and taking control of your finances. All this plus your breaking news, weather, and traffic. How to love your 50s week. Mornings on Channel 2 News today. Weekdays, 4.30 to 7 a.m. We're your morning people. Warning, horribly hurt. When you're hurt in a car wreck, I don't trust those greedy insurance companies as far as I can throw them. Spokespersons for Jim Edler. Don't let the greedy insurance company lowball you and cheat you out of the money you deserve. Don't waste time negotiating with the greedy insurance companies. Don't let the stingy insurance company talk you out of the money the law says is yours. I'm Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer. Hurt in a car wreck, it's hammer time. 713-777-4000. It's a new year. It's time for a new you. This year, get rid of hard-to-lose fat to reveal the slimmer, sexier, and more confident you with Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist. I wish that I would have known about Sonobello years ago. I'm 42, and I'm just starting to live my life the way I want to. Using advanced micro-laser technology, Sonobello can give you the body you deserve in as little as one day with minimal downtime. Call 800-892-7640. Or go to Sonobello.com for our new year, new you, limited time offer. Find out how to get one area free. That's your stomach, inner thighs, even your arms, free. Get your new body now with one of our board-certified surgeons. It's our best offer of the year. Book now and get one area free. Payment plans available. Call 800-892-7640. Or go to Sonobello.com. Well, it's an event that's breaking down the barriers for artists with disabilities and celebrating their works in art, film, and music. And here with a preview of this year's Real Abilities Houston Film and Arts Festival, we have artist Ellen Reichenthal from Celebration Company and event chair Susan Farb Morris. And Ellen, you were just saying your mom and your brother are watching right now? Yes. Okay. Well, tell them how to do it. I told them to because I called them. I had my own cell phone, so I called my mom to tell her to watch this morning. Well, That's I'm sure good. they're watching right now. Mm -hmm. Let's talk first of all about Celebration Company because this organization is all about finding employment opportunities mm -hmm. for all kinds of folks. I, I'm getting ready to start with the Ben Top Hospital, but I don't know when yet. I have to find out. Congratulations. Thank you. And Susan, what a fantastic event. It's hard to believe it's already time for Real Abilities. Talk to us about how this event affects so many Houstonians. Well, Houston is the most diverse city in the country, and we focus on uh, people who have disabilities, which is part of, uh, of our culture. Um, Real Abilities was founded in Houston in 2013, and we utilize the arts to celebrate the lives and stories and talents of people with disabilities. And, and I th we really want to help erase stigmas that uh, often surround uh, people who have disabilities. And we're, we're having a few little issues with your mic, Susan. But essentially, the idea is that you guys are trying to level the playing field and ensure exactly. that people with all types of abilities are represented, they have opportunities to express themselves that's creatively, that's good, right? and they have employment opportunities as well. We're going to go ahead we're gonna, and we're gonna, Ray, bring it in. handheld mic Susan, would for you mind? You. There you go. Thank you. We want to make sure everybody gets sure. the information. Well, we have a film and arts festival where we utilize not only films, which were all free. We have 10, uh, 13 films in 10 days, February 12th through the 21st. But in Houston, we've added different elements that we have an art gallery opening that's Wednesday night at Celebration Company. From 6 to 8 o'clock Wednesday evening. I know. Because I have the cards. We start. <laughs> that's how I know. I've been inviting people. <laughs> we start with a speaker series where we have three speakers who speak for 20 minutes on amazing topics. I mean, one of our speakers is Eric Weinmeyer. Yes. And Eric is the first person who's blind who's made it to the uh, summit of Mount he's Everest. He's fantastic he's to listen to. He's done the seven summits. I mm -hmm. mean, he's spectacular. So that's the only event where there's actually a fee. It's $18, mm -hmm. but you have the three speakers. Um, but the films are all at the Edwards Greenway Theater. And we start uh, Sunday evening and go through Wednesday. And all the films are free and the parking is free. 
It's so awesome. It really is um, such a great event. Ellen, I want to ask you about your art. Can you tell us about uh -huh. your art? What inspires you? The rainbow. The, you know, when the rains, the rain stops and the rainbow comes and I decided to do it. That's your, that's your inspiration, the bright colors. Yeah. There's nothing better right after a rainstorm. And I also... Look at this. Here it is. There's your yeah. words. Uh -huh. And I also do butterflies, colored butterflies. I butterflies. I have the book and I have the colors. I do it so with my mom. Bright colors seem to be a theme for you, Ellen. When did you realize that art was something that brought you joy and helped connect you with other people? Uh, I just was thinking, and all of a sudden, I knew I'd, I'd like to do it. You had an epiphany. You had a moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so right. talented. And that's what I think is so great, Susan, is to be able to walk and see all these different works of art. Well, we see the works of art, and another thing that we have is real music, where we have real musicians. We culminate the festival on Thursday, February 21st, at the White Oak Music Hall. And we have a house band with four professional musicians, but we um, open the stage at White Oak to pre-registered musicians who all have some type of disability. So it can be a visible disability, it could be an invisible disability. We have people whose lives literally have been changed, who have been... Uh, they sustained maybe a, a traumatic brain injury or a mm -hmm. spinal cord injury and thought their lives were over through a, a ski accident or mm -hmm. someone actually uh, tragically shot. And music therapists at Tier have brought music into these people's lives and they're playing and performing <laughs> and we give them uh, this venue, this platform to, to play. And, it's, uh, and I say this, it's a pun, but it's really spine tingling. Right. Well, well, you get the goosebumps. And don't right. we all have disabilities? Some are just more Absolutely. visible than exactly. others, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, Ellen, I want to ask you one more question. Yeah. For you, what does it mean to be involved with real abilities? Because here you're connecting with all kinds of Houstonians who maybe otherwise you wouldn't be connecting with. That's true. That's true because my mom is a Houstonian. My brother's a Houstonian. My, his wife is a Houstonian. Plus... His son, Nathan, he's in Germany right now. Right. He lives there. Yeah. But he comes here every once in a while for uh, uh, to come see us every time. Well, we're so glad that today you came to see us. Ellen Reichenthal, <laughs> Susan Farb-Morris, thank you thank so much you. for stopping by. Good luck with the festival. Okay. We'll see you there. And we want to remind our viewers that if you would like more info on Real Abilities Film Festival Houston, visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. And once again, there are the dates and information on your screen. And we'll be right back with a look at what's happening on tomorrow's show all the rage but how much do you know about bubbles we're taking you to champagne school Derek. oh this segment was made for us custom plus skip the crowds this valentine's day plan a cozy night in we've got easy recipes to help you add a little romance to your big day what happened to our wine i don't oh we had wine at some point during we the show did. what happened to where that? did it go people think we drink it all I, we get a sip and then it disappears i know happy monday